As you guys know, I am slowly moving over to a Mac ecosystem, but I'm still a Premiere user, but I wanna become one of those really annoying Apple fanboys that uses exclusively Apple peripherals and Apple software, and I totally crap on anything that's not made by Apple. So I'm going to give Final Cut one more try. Let's see if it can win me over. This video is sponsored by Motion VFX. These guys make incredible plugins for both Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna be using their plugins later on in this video. Now, in the last video where I was comparing Final Cut Pro to Adobe Premiere, I said that there were a ton of things that I loved about Final Cut Pro, but I had one major issue with Final Cut Pro, and this one problem, at least in my eyes, was probably costing me hours for every project that I was editing. And that's where I wanna start this video because I don't think I did a good job of explaining myself and the way I like to edit. If I start copying a bunch of this footage here, you know, so now I've got over an hour of these clips, probably hundreds of clips here, if not over a thousand different little clips. If I wanted to grab one of these clips an hour in here, and I wanna move it to the very beginning of this timeline, or maybe I wanna move it to minute 16, if I click on this and I start dragging it, see how the timeline just whips across and I've kind of lost track of my place and where I wanna put it and everything. I find it incredibly difficult to edit when the timeline is sliding back and forth like this. You can't really control where you're putting anything. So instead, what I like to do is I like to have two sequences stacked on top of one another. And you can see here, I can do it like this and I can have my B-roll on top and then I can have I, I realize this is uh, incredibly tight here on this uh, really small monitor, but I never edit on a laptop. This is the reason why I never edit on a laptop. But I could, I could see my entire sequence here, or I could zoom into exactly where I want to put this clip, and then I could just drag footage straight down here on the second timeline, and it's incredibly fast to edit this way. So I can find the B-roll clip that I want right here, and boom, I just drag it on exactly where I want it in the sequence below. As far as I know, you cannot do this in Final Cut. You can open multiple sequences and you can kind of open up one timeline at a time and jump between them and copy and paste and everything, but that is incredibly slow, especially when you compare it to this, when you're just dragging footage a few centimeters. Now, one other complaint that I had in my last video with Final Cut Pro was with color grading. And I have learned a little bit more about color grading since making that video. In Adobe Premiere, we have Lumetri Color. And Lumetri Color has a ton of different options. Many of these options do the exact same thing, or they give you the option to get you know a similar effect, but just do it in a different way or with a different looking tool. Um, for some people, this might be a little frustrating because there's almost too many choices, but I personally like this a little bit better because whatever way you feel comfortable editing, Adobe Premiere gives you that option. If you're a photographer, you probably feel most comfortable with sliders like you have in Adobe Lightroom or uh, Adobe Raw with Photoshop. And under the basic correction tab here, we can easily you know, change the exposure. We can individually change things like the highlight or the white level and recover some of that sky. I could darken up the blacks just a little bit while at the same time lowering the shadows. We're just adding a little bit of contrast here. And then I can add some saturation if I wanted to. I can also come down to creative down here and I've got a few other options like vibrance and stuff like that. If we move over to Final Cut Pro, and you click on this little arrow up here, you can see that we can add different types of corrections. Probably the most powerful one that I've learned about so far has been the color wheels here. And although this certainly looks a little bit more complicated and scary for somebody who's never used it before, once you understand how it works, it does really make sense. So here I've got a clip that we shot of Elia in Patagonia, maybe? I don't even remember where we were. Um, and if I click on color wheels right here, this color wheel is for everything. It's a global wheel, but then we also have shadows, highlights, and mid-tones. Now, as you can see over here in our LumaScope, we are pushing these highlights a little bit beyond 100 right here. Uh, that's going to be in our sky. So if we wanted to, we could take our highlights and we could drop those highlights just a little bit. We could also add a little bit more contrast in the mid-tones here. So maybe I would push up our mid-tones just a little bit and then we could lower our shadows. 
And then on the left side of each of these circles, we have the saturation slider. Now you can see if we add saturation globally, maybe it just overdoes everything. It adds a lot of blue to that mountain in the background. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you just want a little bit more of a vibrant sky. What we can do is just add some saturation in the highlights here. And then let's say that you feel like this entire clip is maybe a little bit too cool. We have a temperature slider just like we do in Adobe Premiere here. And we could warm this entire clip up, but maybe you feel like the clip becomes dull when you start adding warmth to the entire shot. So again, instead of trying to change the white balance globally, we could change it individually based on the shadows, highlights, or midtones. So I know that Aliyah here is living in the midtones. I can grab this right here and I can start pulling it over to the yellow channel and I can warm him up, but it's not going to be affecting our shadows or our highlights. Now let's say we wanna separate him from that background a little bit more. I could add some more blue in those shadows and we can start playing with the color difference here. And as you can see, when I'm toggling this on and off, huge difference here. Now, of course, you can do all of this in Premiere as well, but because we have this basic correction panel in Premiere, I think the average user might be more used to doing a global edit. Whereas in Final Cut Pro, it's kind of giving you the options right up front to make more of a custom look. Now, of course, we can do a lot more than that as well. I'm gonna click on this clip right here which is a time lapse of clouds moving past this mountain here. And uh, as you can see, we've got this kind of yellowy brown foreground. It looks cool, but what if we wanted to change that and maybe make it look a little bit greener? I can go back up here to our color correction options and then plus hue slash saturation curves here. So up top we have hue versus hue. And basically this allows us to choose a hue and then change that hue that we've selected. I'm going to click on this little dropper tool here and I'm just going to click on a color that we've got and it gives us a range. The red dot here on the left is kind of like the far end of the range. This yellow slash green is the other end of the range. And then right in the middle is basically where that tone is that I chose. And if I click on this and I drag it up and down, you can see I can change the color of our grass. I've changed it from this dull brown to a really nice healthy green. And I can drag this out if I want to and extend it even further. So right now, obviously, we have this really nice green patch in the back where the sun's hitting it, but we've got some kind of dull green that's in shadow up here. Is there anything that we can do there? What we can do is I can go to Luma versus Saturation, and I'm going to click on an area that's in shadow here. And as you can see here, if I grab the middle and I start pulling it up and down, not a huge difference, but it's affecting everything in that Luma range. So everything that has that level of brightness, which is kind of a dark dim part of the image, it's adding saturation just to that area. Now let's say we wanted to add saturation to the top of the image. We've got this nice blue look on the mountain and in the sky. What we wanna do is we want to choose hue versus saturation. So I want to click on a blue area here and then Usually the easiest thing to do to kind of see what you're affecting is just to pull it down first. We're going to remove the saturation. You can see I can make it pure white, makes it look a lot more stormy, or we can push it way up and obviously that's too much. But if we just wanted to add a little bit of saturation, I think that's looking pretty good there. For all of you Premiere users out there, this does exist. Just come down to curves and then slide down and you can see all of the same options here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, Final Cut is definitely lagging right now. This is not a smooth editing experience like it was last time. So, you know, although this laptop is great, it is not perfect. Now, now it's working well. I don't know, maybe I just have too much going on on the computer. I have both applications open, plus I'm screen recording. It seems to be getting bogged down. For this clip here, let's come down here and go to color curves. And this is where we can easily do global edits to the entire shot. Maybe I want to add a little bit of contrast to this shot here. I could make an S curve, bring down those shadows a little bit, boost those highlights. I really wanna watch 
these uh, blown out areas in the sky though. So you may want to add another point and kind of drop that because we don't want that sky any more blown out than it needs to be. But we're just adding a little bit of like micro contrast or mid-tone contrast, something like that. Give it just a little pop. Now below this first curve, we have the red, green, and blue channel. This is going to allow us to add these colors to individual aspects of the shot based on shadows, midtones, and highlights. As you can see here, if I grab the red towards the bottom and I start pulling this down, you can see it's pulling the red out of the shadows. So if I wanted to, I could pull the red out of the shadows, but then I could add it back in the highlights here. It's just giving our image a little bit of like a duo tone look. Coming down to the green channel, we can do kind of the exact same thing here. And finally, in the blues. So as you can see here, if I toggle this on and off, we've given our shot a look, but you could never replicate this look by just adding blue to a shot because we are individually adding and removing colors based on those shadows, midtones, and highlights. Adobe Premiere certainly seems to have more options when it comes to color grading, but I definitely insinuated before that Final Cut was lacking or maybe it didn't have really important features. But after digging a little bit deeper, Final Cut definitely has a lot more than I thought it did. And for 99% of people, it probably has more than you will ever need. Now you may be wondering why I've been testing out photographing the world footage in both of these programs. It's a tutorial series that we've done with Lyle Licardi. We've released four of them so far, um, and we are considering doing a fifth, maybe in Japan, maybe later this year. And I've just been thinking about ways that I can raise the production value. Obviously, I've got a bunch of ideas from a filming standpoint. I can do that easily when I get there on location, but I've been thinking about what I can do from an editing standpoint or a post-processing standpoint. And that's really why I wanted to give Final Cut Pro one more look because in the last video that I made about Final Cut Pro, I mentioned how much easier it was to use plugins with this program than it has ever been for me in Adobe Premiere. Now, in my last video, I used plugins from Motion VFX, and they sent me even more plugins, and they said, hey, give these a try. And there was something that I did different this time. I think the first time, maybe I manually installed the plugins. I didn't know this was a thing, but this time I just noticed when I went to their website that they gave me the option to download their M installer. It's basically like uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud installer software that manages all of the different Adobe programs. Well, this one manages all of the Motion VFX plugins and it makes it incredibly easy to see what you've purchased in the past and either install or uninstall them from your computer with just a single click here. So you can see here, these are all of the plugins that I've been playing with recently. And if you want to install them, you just click on the install button. These are already installed. And if you want to uninstall them, you just click on uninstall. And once again, I, I have just had a nightmare with plugins and Adobe Premiere. We've had issues in the past where, you know, we did some old project with some plugin that doesn't work anymore with a new version of Adobe Premiere. And then when we open that project, we can't get the footage to play back anymore. So having a professional hub like this that keeps everything up to date and makes it easy to install the stuff if you, you know, for instance, buy a new computer, is awesome and it actually makes me want to start using plugins again. And in case I haven't made this clear, Motion VFX does not make plugins for Adobe Premiere. I know it drives me crazy too. There, I'm sure there's some technical reason, but you can get all of these plugins for Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve. Premiere users, you are out of luck. Now, the main plugin that I've been testing out today has been called M Journey. And you can see here, if you click on the title area and then click on M Journey, uh, it gives you a ton of different options here. And these plugins were specifically made for like vloggers or like travel video style things. Maybe the shot of Aliyah walking is a little bit blurry. I could drop a lens flare right on top of it, shrink it down to the size and uh, you can move it around. Maybe I just want it right in front of Aliyah there and boom. It's automatically animated after you drop it in, but if you wanna change any of that, you can in the menu on the right. Here I've added a letterbox effect. It just brings those black bars along the top and the bottom, making your shots look a little bit more cinematic. Let's add a light leak to this shot here. I'm gonna turn up the opacity here so that we can really see it. And you can see what it's doing right there. Let's play it back. 
It's obviously a little bit much. It comes in at 10% natively. Maybe we want to be right around there. It just adds a little bit more life to your shot. And then of course it comes with LUTs as well. I'm just going to drag this LUT preset right on top of this one shot of Alaya. And then from here, I can change the way our footage looks with just one click here. And I mean, this is totally changing the vibe of this relatively boring shot. I mean, the, the shot is cool, but just the color in the shot was pretty boring. So just take a look at the difference between these two clips here. It's not a huge difference, but it's just like the feeling totally changes. It just feels like it went from straight out of camera, kind of raw looking footage to a finished look. Now this plugin has so many other features. I don't have time to go into all of them. One that I really love is it has the ability to upload your own map and then create two points and it creates this journey line, you know, like they have in Indiana Jones or whatever. That's incredible. I've always wanted to know how the heck do you make that? It's just built into the software. It also has tons of these titles. So if you wanna add some title with a cool animation, you can easily do that by just dragging it on and boom, you have this amazing professional looking title. But I wanna show you a couple of other things from these different plugins that they sent me as well. On the bottom right of the screen, you can click on the transition menu down here and I've got this plugin called M Transition Zoom Volume 3 and they have so many different transitions here and you can just grab these and drag them in between clips and it's going to transition between those clips. Now it's warning me right now that I don't have enough footage on either side of the clip because actually the clips that I have in this timeline are 100% uh, in length. They're very short, uh, raw clips. So to make this work properly, what I need to do is shorten these clips a bit. So I could like shorten that one and then shorten this one. And then I could drop this in between these two and then it's going to have enough footage to work. And just like that, it works, it animates everything, it looks perfect, you're not having to wait for anything to render, and it also gives you the option to manually change things. So let's say I want to move where this effect is happening. Maybe I want it to happen right on Aliyah. I can just move that there and then watch it again. Boom, and there's Aliyah. Let's shorten that one and shorten this one just to give us some room to work here. And uh, I'll drag another one of these in. Kind of a similar look, but uh, instead of that bulge, it's making things kind of dark when it zooms in. Let's delete that and try something else. Here's a custom twirl. Let's try a hyper jump. All right, one more here. Let's try a scrape. And again, over here on the right side, we have the effects options and you can change everything about each one of these effects. Now, I don't have time to go through all of these, but most of them look incredible. And if you've always wondered how those fancy YouTubers are getting those incredible transitions, are they animating those manually? No, they are literally dragging something like this in between two clips and it looks awesome without doing anything at all. So if you've been looking for a simple plugin solution for video editing to help you with titles, transitions, LUTs, looks, all of those things, in all honesty, it has nothing to do with them being a sponsor. Motion VFX plugins are by far the best plugins I have ever used in my entire life. I mean, it's so freaking simple, but at the same time, totally customizable. Installing them is easy, using them is easy. I just can't say enough good things about them. However, my one complaint is that I can't use them in Adobe Premiere. So right now, because of my workflow and the type of footage I'm editing and everything, I'm probably still sticking with Adobe Premiere, but Final Cut Pro and plugins like these are making this decision really hard. If there's something I'm missing, if you have any recommendations on making editing much larger files easy in Final Cut Pro, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.